This is Mrs. Butcher, and this video is on ellipses. This is section 9.4 in your Algebra 2 book. Okay, so the technical definition of an ellipse is the set of all points in a plane such that the sum of the distances to two fixed points is a given constant. And I demonstrated this in class with some string. Um, so here we have two pictures of standard ellipses, horizontal and vertical. We've got all the major parts labeled on here. We've got a major axis, which is the long one a minor axis, which is the short one, and then we have um, foci, vertices, and covertices. Let me highlight those. Um, there's foci here. I think I just covered up the Fs. There's ver covertices here. There's a vertex here and a vertex here. Um, and, then, and then we have the same thing with vertices being on the long axis on your uh, vertical ones. Your covertices are always on the short axis. We have our foci. And then um, we have A, B, and C, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Okay, so when you have your ellipse, um, the equations for the ellipses, the horizontal equation is always going to be x minus h all squared over a squared plus y minus k all squared over b squared equals 1. It always equals 1. And then for a vertical, it's x minus h all squared over b squared plus y minus k all squared over a squared equals 1. And that's because a is always your longer axis. So if it's a horizontal ellipse, a is the distance from your center to your vertex. And in the, if it's in the x direction, it's under the x. However, in your vertical, a is still your long radius, your distance from the center to the vertex. Um, but since it's in the y direction, it's under the y part. Then b is going to be the distance from your center to your covertex. And that's going to be vertical here or horizontal here. And then we also have C, and that would be your distance um, from the center to a focus. It's the same on either one of these. Your foci are always located on the major axis, and the relationship between A, B, and C is always A squared minus B squared equals C squared. And I have one more thing to add. Um, something we're going to need to know is the lattice rectum of an ellipse is going to be the, uh, the line that goes through the focus to, um, you know, to the edges of the ellipse. So you'll have one here and here. They'll be the same. Or in this case, here and here. And the length of your lattice rectum is going to be 2b squared over a. So make sure you put that in your notes, too. All right. So in this example, we want to graph x squared over 16 plus y squared over 36 equals 1. So the first thing we're going to do is decide if it's horizontal or vertical. And we're looking at bigger number here. So that tells me, because the bigger number is under the y, it's going to be vertical. It tells me that a is the square root of 36 which is 6. And then b is going to be the square root of 16, which is 4. We could figure out c because we know c squared is a squared minus b squared. So 36 minus 16 is 20. That makes c the square root of 20, which can be simplified to 4 or to 2 root 5. And so now that we've got a and b and see, we can graph this. All we need to do is locate the uh, center. Center is always at hk. We don't have an h here, we don't have a k here, so our center is at 0, 0. Then, in the y direction, we're going to go 6 units, up and 6 down, and put our vertices. I'm going to put v's by them. So if we had to write them down, 
these points are at 0, 6, and 0, negative 6. So I'm going to put plus or minus to save space. Okay, now in the x direction, we're going to go 4 units, left and right. And those are our covertices. I'll put CVs on them. So those are at positive and negative 4 and 0. And then we must plot our foci. And those always go in the major direct, the major axis, so in this case the y axis. So they're going to be at 0, positive and negative 2 root 5. And when you're plotting this, you can say, all right, well, 2 root 5, that's about 4 and a half. So 4 and a half, put an F on that. 4 and a half, put an F on that. You've got your foci plotted. All you have left to do is connect the dots. It's kind of difficult, so if your ellipse is ugly, that's okay, as long as these six pink points that I have on here are in the right place and written down, then you are good to go. This time we're going to graph one that is not centered at the origin. So in this case, we have an h value, and that's 2, and we have a k value, and that's negative 1. So our center is at 2, negative 1, right there. And every point that we plot on here is now coming off of the center, not the origin. So we need to decide, is this horizontal or vertical? 36 is bigger, and that's under the y part, so this is vertical. a is the square root of 36, which is 6. b is the square root of 16, which is 4. c squared, we did the same uh, 36 and 16 in the first problem. 36 minus 16 is 20, so c is 2 root 5. All right, so from our center, in the y direction, we're going to go up and down 6 units. So we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and put a vertex. And down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and put a vertex. So then we need to actually write the ordered pairs of those vertices. This one up at the top is at 2, 5. This one at the bottom is at 2, negative 7. All right, now in the x direction, we're going to go 4 units left and 4 units right from the center. So 4 units and 4 units. Those are your co-vertices. We'll write them down. The one on the left is at negative 2, negative 1. And the one on the right is at 6, negative 1. And then our foci are going to be 2 root 5 units away from the center. Remember, 2, 2 root 5 is about 4.5, but I don't want you to say about 4.5. The only reason you need to know that is so that you can count on your graph. 1, 2, 3, 4.5. But when you write these down, you're going to have to say they're both at 2, comma. And then the y's both started at negative 1. So I'm going to say negative 1. And then we went up and we went down. So I'm going to say plus or minus 2 root 5. Like that. So everything's plotted. Everything's written down. Let's connect the dots. and we have our ellipse. Okay, in this example, we're going to write the equation of an ellipse with the center at 0, 0, a vertex at 0, 6, and a covertex at negative 3, 0. So like I've told you guys before, it always helps to just sketch a quick little picture. Center's at 0, 0, vertex is at 0, 6, and covertex is at negative 3. So just by looking at that, this gives me the fact that it is vertical because your vertex is on the y-axis. This gives me the a value of 6. It gives me a b value of 3 units. And 
H and K are 0, 0, so we have all the letters we need to fill in the equation, which um, is for a uh, vertical is going to be X minus H squared over B squared plus Y minus K squared over A squared equals 1. And we're just going to fill in. H is 0, so that's just X squared. B is 3, so over 9. And then Y minus K, well, K is 0, so Y squared over 6 squared, which is 36, equals 1. So when you have these board problems, you just need to draw a little picture for yourself of what the information that they give you, because then you can determine the letters, the things that you need to fill in the equation. And one more example, we're going to write the equation for the ellipse with the center at 0, 0, co-vertex at 0, square root 7, and focus at negative 3, 0. So if we sketch this out, our center is at 0, 0, the co-vertex is at 0, square root of 7. So that's a co-vertex this time, and it's the square root of 7 here. And the focus is at negative 3. So what this gives us is that it's going to be horizontal. It gives us a B value, because B goes to the covertices of the square root of 7. It gives us a C value of 3. And we just need to solve for A using A squared minus B squared equals C squared. So we're going to say a squared minus the square root of 7 squared equals 3 squared. a squared minus 7 equals 9. a squared is 16. That means a is 4. All right, so now that I know a, b, and c, and h and k, because that's h and that's k, I can write my equation. This time it's horizontal, so it's going to be x minus h, so x squared over a squared, which is 16, plus y minus k, which is 0, so y squared, over b squared. If I square the square root of 7, I get 7, and it equals 1. It always equals 1. And that's that. In this example, um, I've given you a general form equation. That's where it's multiplied all out, um, just like this. And I'm going to ask you to write it in standard form. So first you have to be able to figure out what kind of conic section it is. Uh, when we did circles, we had an x squared and a y squared. When we did parabolas, we only had one or the other. In this case, we have an x squared and a y squared. But the difference is, in circles, your coefficient is before them is going to be exactly the same. If it's a, uh, an ellipse, they will be the same sign, but they will be different numbers. And so that's what we have here, so we know it's an ellipse. To put it in standard form, I don't know yet um, which is bigger, you know, A or B. It doesn't really matter. I know my standard form is X minus H all squared over A or B squared, one or the other, plus Y minus K all squared over A or B squared equals 1. So what I want to do, the first thing I want to do is group my terms. I want to put the X's together, so I'm going to go 9X squared plus 36x, and then I want to put the y's together, so I'll leave the space, and then I'll put plus 25y squared minus 150y, so that covers those two, and then I'm going to move the 36 out of my way, so I'll put equals negative 36. All right, after we group our terms, we cannot complete the square with a number in front of our x squared and our y squared. So remember, we have to factor out the 9 here, and I'll have x squared plus 4x, and then I'm going to leave a space. All right? Then I'm going to factor out the 25, and I'll have y squared minus 150 divided by 25 is 6y, and then I'm going to leave a space so that I can complete the square along the same line, and then equals negative 36. After that, we will be completing the square. So, 
Half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4. I'm going to add 4. But be careful because I'm really adding 9 4s into this side of the equation. So on this side of the equation, I have to add 9 4s, or 36. All right? For the second one, half of 6 is 3 squared is 9, so I'm going to add 9 inside here. But I'm really adding 25 9s, so I also have to add 25 9s to the right to keep it balanced. All right, so now I'm going to factor. Keep the 9, and we have x plus 2 all squared. Keep the 25. We have y minus 3 all squared equals, and that's a negative 36, plus 36 is 0, plus 25 times 9 is 225. So we're almost there, but they always equal 1. So in order to make this equal 1, we're just going to divide everything by 225. And 9 over 225 reduces. So we will have x plus 2 all squared over 25. And 25 over 225 reduces, so we'll have y minus 3 all squared over 9 equals 1. And now it's in standard form. And now we can see that the 25 is bigger, so on a 1 rather than a vertical 1. Sorry guys, I know it's blurry, but this was the best conic video or conic joke I could find. We're done with this video. You guys have a good night.